I feel like going on the internet. It's a nondescript day in 1997, and, well, I've got some time to kill. So, let's flash back to the 1997 internet experience. First, we've got to fire up the computer. Speakers, of course. Modem. Computer. And normally, I would push the monitor button, but the monitor's there. Okay, well, well, this boots. And I guess we're just going to have to skip the memory test. I'm going to use Windows 95. Meaning, Windows 98's coming. I don't even know if my 486 will run it. But it sounds cool. Maybe I'll find some great information about Windows 90, Windows 98 or even Windows 95 on the internet. When we get there, we'll know. You know, I'm hoping that nobody's on the phone. Jeez, if someone's jabbering on the phone, I won't be able to get online. Even worse, what if there are no open lines at my internet service provider? Good grief. The online headache these days is getting pretty bad, so I really wouldn't want to have to get stuck waiting through busy signals. Well, let's give it a try and hope for the best. Promising. Yeah, we're in. All right, well, before I go look and see if there's any information, I guess I should see if I have any friends online. You know, I really like to chat with my friends online, whether they're right in town or across country. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's sign on, shall we? Rats. No friends online. Well, I could leave this up and just let them come on online and chat with me, but what if I get interested in something and really don't want to talk? So I'm just going to kill this. Okay. Let's see what's on the internet. I'm going to stop my start page from loading. Okay, just because. And you know what? Let's go see if there's something fun to search for. Ah, InfoSeek, one of the many great places to go here in 1997. I can search the web, I can find people, I can even search Usenet. You know, I mean, what kind of makes and models of cars have we got here? The internet is so full of so much great information. This modem is so much faster than my old 14.4 modem. This 33.6 really screams. Oh, the image is broken. Must be they need to get a new server. Remember noobs saying that in IRGC channels. Let's see, make some model specifics. Oh, look at all these great models of cars. You know, though, I mentioned something about Windows 98 earlier. I wonder if there's something over at Windows Magazine. Maybe they'll have some great information on the up-and-comings of Microsoft Windows. Come on, Internet, I'm so curious. Oh, here we go. Well, the image is low. We can take a look. Let's see. Karen Kemworthy's toolkit. She apparently has a collection of must-have Windows utilities. 
Get a feel for Memphis. Oh, Windows 98. And customize Windows 95 with editor Mike Elgin's latest favorites. We got a software library. Shareware top 10. Maximize your Win95 PC internet connection with these hot picks from our July issue. Oh, man. And I could just go look in the July issue. Oh, Win297. I really need to tweak my copy of Windows 95 with bizarre registry tweaks. Turned into a, a nice, friendly GUI. So message exchange. We have departments and back issues. Oh, and a spot for Windows 95 and Windows NT. Hmm. Well, isn't that great? Um, let's see if Karen's toolkit is something we can access. I imagine her toolkit's getting a little rusty now. Ah. If you ever thought, gee, I wish Windows could. Chances are a power Windows columnist, Karen Kenworthy, has already thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. Out there thinking for me. Well, many of these utilities require 16 and 32 bit Visual Basic runtime modules. If they're not, please download, I'll just download those random DLLs from you guys and dump them in my C Windows system folder. The Windows Resource Probe. On 486, let me give you a hint. Your resources are taken. Oh, well, this has been enlightening. I wonder if there's anything else. Oh, you know, let's go to the manufacturer page for this computer and see if they have anything good to say. Oh, well, Tandy is united against crime with its own divisions. It's good to know. Steve's workbench. I know, Steve. Your workbench never has anything fun. Let's see what you can tell me about TV and FM reception. If I'm having trouble with my television and TV reception, what might I do? Well, apparently I should just consider looking for digital satellite receivers. Okay, well, you know, I'm not even going to wait for the image to load. Let's see. Oh, they even provide me a helpful link so I can get information on direct-to-home satellite. I think we're going to have to check this out. I'm getting tired of just channels 2 and 12. And we've got RCA brand DSS. Direct-to-home satellite with pay-per-view and coverage of sports teams not usually available in my area. Along with 31 commercial-free digital audio channels. Now this is 90s living. Or I can go with Prime Star. Now Prime Star, that's the way to go. For about a dollar a day, 95 channels. And the carrier is a viewer's choice pay-per-view. Well, and if I decide to stick with my old junk or my old large C-band dish, I guess I can have LMBs and stuff sent to me. Look at this, Channel Master stuff. Wow, look at this, copyright 1988, Tandy Corporation, wow. This was very enlightening. I know the page hasn't loaded all the way. I think I've gotten everything I need to know. So one last question. Can we get an idea of what's happening in the news today? And apparently, there's no love at msnbc.found. The news was not found. Hmm. That's because it went to mine. Weird. Whatever.